Welcome back, everybody. It's Sports with Mono and Mono. Today is June 26, 2021. And here with my trusted companion and partner and brother, Steve. Welcome back, everybody, to uh, another show of Mono and Mono. Yeah. Another exhilarating week of sports. Oh, I mean, the hockey and play in the NBA is very good. Actually. I've watched more NBA in the past, you know, months than I have in the past 15 years, i got to say. Coincidence that LeBron's not playing? Man, we don't have to go uh-huh. there again. No? <laughs> I think ratings are up that uh, LeBron's not playing. Well, you got a lot of different teams. We're going to certainly no knock on that. LeBron. I'm just saying it's nice that... Um, Different you know, faces. The foregone yeah. conclusion of who's going to win the the championship. Uh, it's still up for grabs too. So yeah, but we're going to talk about I'm it. I'm just obviously. saying, without LeBron, you don't have that foregone conclusion. Yeah. This year. Yeah. And he's probably going to buy the Lakers because the uh, owner of the Lakers, one of them, is selling 27 percent of the team. Can't you see that he's going to be the one that's going to buy it? Well, as I said last week, you and know, I haven't heard anything about that, but I, it makes sense to me. I think he's probably doing house calls, like I said last week. You know, he is a doctor and plays one on TV, too. <laughs> he's also the commissioner. He's a busy guy. Busy guy. So, anyway, welcome back, everybody. There's a lot of stuff to talk about, and uh, we're going to jump in. I, I think I have the monologue this week, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And, uh, yes, you do. It's going to be about a topic that, you know, it's been talked about for many, many years, and it's... um. That's what my monologue's about. It was about this NCAA and the Supreme Court ruling, right? That these kids can now get compensated for their... It's called nil, right? Uh, name, image, and likeness. That's the, sh- the short of it. Um, and I've been thinking, you know, thinking about this. You know, what does it mean for, you know, college athletics? And, you know, when I think about it, you know, we think about Reggie Bush and the guy, you know, he gets cars and stuff because he's the best best player. My original thought, and it's always been this way, that when the topic came up about should college athletes be paid, my answer was always no. Why? Because they're getting a scholarship that's worth, you know, like $60,000 a year. But this is a little bit different. This is about their image. And I, I don't have a problem with these kids, you know, with these video games and they use these likenesses i'm on board with it i'm okay with that it doesn't cross the area where you know recruiting you know if if you buy me a maserati i'll come here or if you buy me a porsche i'll come here it's not about that it's it's about these kids getting paid not not because they're going to that university but they're getting paid because people are out there and they're well known and i don't have any problem with it The one thing I do have a little concern about is this Mark Emmert. Mark Emmert's the president of the NCAA. And, you know, he's he's been pushing these these universities to to lighten up and and start taking these nil laws and and allowing these kids. It's just kind of hard for me to understand what his ultimate motive is. It's not going to do away with amateurism in college sports. And like I said, these kids are getting free education and they live in the best facilities and so forth but it's very this is kind of a, a you know a big movement in, in in college amateur athletics and i'm on board with it i'm, I'm okay with these kids getting the, getting paid for you know if they use him in a video game i'm okay with that but the concern is that it's going to start opening up and again making porsches and versus maserati the determining factor and that's not okay with me um, so that's my that's my monologue this week. What do you think, Steve? No, it's a good topic, and obviously it's at the forefront of, of this week. The Supreme Court ruled 9-0 nine, nine that, you know, the Supreme Court, it wasn't really about the likeness and image aspect of it. It was more on, um, on top of the scholarship, you know, we, we, we could actually have a discussion for, for eight hours on this. But, but when a kid gets, uh, you know, ruled ineligible for something stupid, like, you know, getting a meal from somebody. That's or, ridiculous. I or, agree. Or, you know, taking a loan from somebody. I mean, 
I think that's at the heart of it. But the, a Maserati versus a Porsche is a different right, thing, right? Right, mm-hmm. Let's just say the door has been opened, and, and it stemmed from a lawsuit filed by Sean Alston, who was a running back at West Virginia. Yep. Ed O'Bannon uh, from basketball UCLA is yep. the guy who spearheaded the likeness image from the video. And that from goes back 25 game. years right. ago, too. So, right, so actually the state of Kentucky just uh, two days ago, the governor enacted a law by where like Louisville and the Kentucky basketball players um, have now a legal right to maintain their own image. So to your point of Porsche and Maserati and this, that, and the other thing, you have to understand this isn't applying to every kid across <laughs> the landscape of, of, of college athletics. Oh, there's, there's, it's for, there's thousands it's, of... Uh, but it's for the elite, elite, elite guys that now can make that kind of money. So now if they want to show up on campus and they got a check in the mail for you know $80,000 a week for the next... Then they can show up in a Porsche and, and nobody raises an eyebrow. Right. But, you know, right. but when you're talking about this as a whole, I don't... I, I used to be in the same camp. They're getting a scholarship. That's it. But we know with the way how much money is generated, and you're paying coaches, and and, and the absurd amount of money generated by say college football, just for example. But what, but what difference is it between a, a guy that owns a construction company? He makes all of the money, and the guys work for him, and that's it's the, it's capitalism kind of thing. Right. So I don't I don't fault the NCAA for making that kind of money. Uh, you're giving a free scholarship to these kids. And, and the know? other aspect, let, let let's also. Uh, you know, call a spade a spade here, you know, a lot of them are not going to school. The one and dones, especially in, in college basketball. Right. Which so very- it's a farce that they're getting a scholarship. Do you think they're really there for, for education? Like and I'm not saying, thing. again, everybody. I'm not, I'm not making this a blanket statement. But I'm saying something had to be done and... It's not good for the NCAA that they they will have to start sharing uh, the pie. Uh, but there, that pie is so huge. That's my point. <laughs> no, that they, that's, they can afford to give these kids the money. That's yeah. the crux of the matter here. So yeah. this is far from over, but the door uh, has been opened. Yeah, no uh, question. The about genie it. has been let out of the bottle, and uh, we'll see how uh, yep. it, it it finally um, you know. A plan is, but of course, course, there's going to be a big disparity between this because you're going to get the guy who's going to be the favorite of the high school, you know, I mean, for the Heisman Trophy, and he's going to get all these endorsement opportunities and so forth. So it's not going to be across, like you said before. You know how many college NCAA college athletes there are with all these different sports? You know, thousands, thousands. Yeah, but you know what. Good for these kids, I mean, but I, I don't want it to be a bidding war between schools about, you know, it's okay if, if I buy you a better car that you come yeah. here. I don't... But, but again, real quick, to sum this up, Ed O'Bannon, yeah, former UCLA basketball player, he was on the national championship team, you know, Nets first round pick, yep. sitting, sitting on his couch with his buddies. And, you know, they, they get, you know, Nintendo or whatever. It Playing is. a video game, and there he is. And there right? he is. Yeah. And this this game yeah. is generating buco, buco bucks. Yeah. So can you, you have to understand, he's sitting there saying, that's me. <laughs> what about me? Yeah, where's my check? I get it. And, you know. Consider him a pioneer listen, in this effort. Ab- absolutely. And it took 25 years for it to be Well, movement, that's the legal right? system, but yep. you know what? That's the essence of it all. But the door is open for these ah, kids. Like I, mean, I said, no the, question the genie's out of the bottle. But our monologue and, and uh, initial topic was sponsored by Coriano Trucking of Summer Hill, New York. Thank you for your support. Thank you, Guy. Right? So let's move on. Listen, first we got to talk about, because there was a golf tournament last week, and it was pretty, pretty good. Yes, it was. And it was the United States Open Championship, won by John Rahm. And who came in second? Louis Osterhazen. Yeah. <laughs> like, we were pulling for him, but he, get, he takes out his driver on 17, and one of the most treacherous, if you hit it left, you're done. And he hit it left, and he was done. But John Rahm, he, he, he nailed it. Didn't he nail it? I mean, on 16 and 17 or yeah, 17 yeah. and 18, whatever it was. Yeah, the putts he made were awesome. money. And, and I like the kid. Yeah, I know. mean, the story couldn't have been better. He starts the month getting COVID yep. or, or, you know, symptomatic, what have you. He has to pull out of the tournament. 
And, uh, you know, he just became a father a month ago or so. Won his first tournament yeah. on Tory it, Pines. It, it, his, his and got engaged his, to his wife yeah. on Tory his, Pines. His father uh, ma- makes a tournament. It's Father's Day. He makes these putts. We, we've spoken of John Ram. Rom. We like John Rom. Yep. We've been... Um, we're not surprised. He, he, he's, he's got finally it. got his major. Not finally. Yeah. It was coming. Um, There'll be more. But the story couldn't have played out any better. And then uh, I saw a video of him, uh, I think it was two days ago, celebrating. It's at night. They're, you know, wherever at their home. And he's drinking uh, out of the uh, the U.S. Open Cup, and, and he's hitting a golf ball, you know, glow in the dark <laughs> golf ball, and taking another swing. Living large, wow. right? it, it, but it was great. It was great, and the it, Sunday afternoon it. U.S. Open at the Torrey Pines on Father's Day was awesome. But I was pulling for Louis Osterhazen because we liked him. We we liked him for years, but how many times has he come in second? It's crazy. Yeah, we mentioned it. You right? know, Louis always always all he does is play golf, and he's in contention yep. for uh, the most part in, in all the majors. And uh, yep. listen, <laughs> it's, it's the and US, what's coming up? It's the U.S. Open. So. And what's coming up next? The Open Championship. I think it's at Royal St. George's this year, if I'm not mistaken. So. But there's a lot of COVID protocols these guys are getting a little anxious about. But um, that's awesome. And that's great for us because we can get up at 5 in the morning and watch golf. <laughs> golf. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't want to take me away from a golf, Mr. Kramer. That's right. <laughs> so that was awesome. But it really, congratulations to John Rom. Great story, man. Great for golf. It was awesome. Yeah. Right? Yes. Let's move on. How about the National Hockey League? Now, first, let me jump in and say I, I fully expected it to be the Islanders versus the Golden Knights in the final. You were rock solid on Tampa Bay the whole time. And I watched the game last night, Game 7, which is unbelievable. Game 7 playoff wow. hockey. But I watched it and I kept saying... God, the Tampa Bay Lightning, they're just relentless. They keep coming and coming, and they got a, a great goaltender in the pipes. And I kept singing the way the Islanders have been playing, and you know I'm a Barry Trotz fan, that these guys were going to come, and they had their opportunities. But what a game, and they lost second straight season to Tampa Bay. Yeah, but the Islanders have nothing to, to uh, you know, lower their heads about. No, they not are, at all. They're a young, energetic team with a great coach, Lou Lamarillo, pulling the st- strings up top. Yep. Second year in a row, they get to the semis and lose to Tampa. No, they got nothing uh, uh, to be ashamed of. They're, they have a great nucleus of young talent. Yep. But like I said, I think Tampa... Uh, you know, with the veteran leadership of Stamkos and, and guys like that. And you brought him up, Kucherov, the other day. Right. I mean, this kid's a warrior. He's, he's, <laughs> he's great. How about Patrick Maroon, right? We, we sure. loved him about a couple of years yeah. ago when he won the Cup. Yeah. You got Ryan McDonough still on the team from, yep. from the Rangers. Um, but, it's uh, again, hockey is it's crazy because the Islanders lose eight, Nothing <laughs> during the series. Which was in a one fluke, game. obviously. That's I mean, the it point. It's a it's a fluke, right? Yeah. But flip, you know, out to the West. I thought Vegas was going to get by the Canadians. Nobody, really, for the most part, you know, not thought, me. Thought the Canadians could uh, not me. do what they've done. But you got to give them credit, big time. And uh, but they got a goaltender that could well, actually Carey, take them to the Carey cup. Price has been an established, really good goaltender, and. Uh, uh, Montreal has just been playing really good hockey. And, uh, <laughs> they deserve to be in the final. Yeah. So I think this will be a good final, Tampa and uh, Montreal. But that's I'm still riding hockey. I'm yeah. still riding Tampa as the superior team, yeah. and I think they'll win back-to-back cups. Yeah. It's going to be a great final, a great final. And listen, we, we, we go back to the to the days of, you know, not, not the 50s with uh, Jean Bellevue and all those guys, yeah. right? A young, but we go back to the Miami. Guy Lafleur, Steve Shutt, the Flower, Larry Robinson, oh. Bob Gainey, I Serge mean, Savard. That's uh, when you knew, the, you know. That's Mario Tremblay. Right. I mean, on and on. They took and the on. Rangers apart in the '79 Stanley Cup right. final. Larry and, Robinson. Oh my God. Ken Dryden. Yep. I mean, they, they, that that but, team was. But you know what? This year, this this hockey stretch has been just as exciting. It's been great. It's been great to watch. But you're right. Tampa Bay is just relentless, yeah. over and over, just pounding it. 
But that's going to be a great final, so we're going to talk about that, see how it goes. Yeah. And you're right. Montreal came into the playoffs with the worst record, right? Barely limped in. But, you know, it's great to see. Great to see. I, I just want to say on the Ranger front, uh, Gerard Gallant had his introductory <clears throat> press conference. It was great. And Chris Drury <laughs> was there. I, it was great. I am all in on Gerard Gallant. Good call by you, by the way, that, you know, you, you, he was your guy from the get-go. Yeah. You know, and he got it, but he's he's all business, this guy. And I tell you, I know everything there is to know about Chris Drury, right? Yep. Fellow, Boston University right, guy. Yep. Right, but we remember Chris Drury from the Little League World Series uh, leading Trumbull, Connecticut. <laughs> I know. Okay, so I re- reread an article about him. Uh, it took me like twenty minutes, but I, I I can't get enough of what Chris Drury embodies, and and it just reinforced to me I am thrilled that this kid is in charge of the New York Rangers. Yep. Okay, so the, a quick story about him was in the Little League World Series was. They're playing Taiwan. Taiwan has had won 13 out of the last 20. They're going to be interviewed on ABC. Drury's going to be the starting pitcher for Trumbull and the and the Taiwanese kid pitcher. So two Taiwanese kids were laughing right right before the interview, and Drury was looking at him like he wanted to murder him. <laughs> and what he meant was, the story was, wait till I get on that I mound. I think and, you and, mentioned and, this and, before. And Drury, yeah. and then yeah. all he does is win. Yep. And he's ultra competitive, and uh, he's, he's a high, high, high character guy. So I just wanted to mention that to our Ranger fans. I think, I think it's great. And there. I wanted to bring it up that you you nailed it. That's the coach. That's the right guy. They, things look great. But hockey and the Islanders and Barry Trotz. I can't get enough of him. I think he's classy. I think he's awesome. But it was great. So let's move on to the National Basketball Association, which has been. Pretty exciting in its own right. Yes, know? it has. I mean, last night, Giannis, this guy is a freak. He's awesome. He made a move last night that was, you know, and they referenced it. I said, I knew, as soon as I saw it, I go, they're going to talk about this on Sports Center tomorrow, like it was the Jordan change in midair and, you know, move hands. What a player, though. What a player. But you know what? I don't even know. I, I don't even know who's going to win the Suns Clippers series because. Every time we count the Clippers out, they come back. Yeah, the, the previous but if you look two at, series, they've been down 0-2. But if you look back. at the Phoenix Suns, you know, the the series Booker's having, and this uh, DeAndre Ayton, he's pretty good, man. Yeah, he's pretty tall, too. So it, it looks like, I, like I said, the Bucks. I think, you know, the, the Hawks had their run. I don't was know. Good. I, really? I don't think it's... I, I Trey don't Young think, scored 48 points and manhandled the Bucks. Right, but he got annihilated last night, so okay. that happens. Okay. Listen, nobody's a bigger Trey, Trey Young fan than me. I, I'm very impressed with what he's done. So we shall see if it continues yep. that Mike Budenholzer finally figured out a defensive scheme yep. to uh, limit this kid because he's been... Lights out. But I'm going to say, no matter who comes out of the East, I, I, I can't see somebody in the West, like the Clippers I or have the Suns, from not to, winning this whole right, thing. Right, but I have, you know? to, I have to go with the Bucks uh, beating the Hawks. I mean, <clears throat> And that would be a great story. You know why? Because Giannis, he could he could have been the free agent of, of the century, right? And he signed with Milwaukee, says, I want to win a championship. He's done nothing, but he's, he's kind of a classy kid. I like him. He's humble, and, and he's awesome. Well, I also want to say something about the, the Clippers. They're coached by Tyrone Lou. And I know you shake your head, you go, Tyrone Lou, what, what are you kidding, you know? I was just shaking my head saying, Tyrone Lou, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. Exactly. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm here to tell you this guy is a solid coach. Oh, I, I'm serious. I, I, I am a fan of him. And, uh, yeah, you can say he, he was the, stepped into the LeBron Cleveland thing. and, and He stepped and, into the LeBron nah, Cleveland but thing. I, again, you know, I, I like to read. I like to, you know, if there's some, something I want to learn about. I have a lot of respect for this guy. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't look at him like you do, like this guy's a joke. No. This I'm, guy is really a good coach. I think he's a Joe Torre who, who inherited teams right. that you had to win. No, you, you I couldn't help but win. I begged to differ because there was one quick story about him in Game 7 for the uh, Cleveland Cavaliers and at halftime or something, he really called out LeBron James in front of the whole... I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> this is a true story. He, he dressed them down and called them out to motivate them. Not, and not a lot. And that's not why a, he was fired, you know, the next year or whatever. No, nah, the right? point is... 
there's not a lot of guys that would stand up and do something like that. And to me, that... Uh, he wasn't even listening. Uh, <laughs> he wasn't even nah, listening. Yeah, nah. <laughs> Steve, come on. My point is, uh, I think Tyrone Lue is, yep. a, is, a, is, is very instrumental in why the Clippers are where they're at. Okay. So listen, you know, before we move off the NBA and enjoy the rest of the playoffs, this is going to be exciting. There's a lot of head coaching guys. Looks like uh, Jason Kidd got the Mavericks job. Ooh. Rick Carlisle gets the Pacers job. I forgot that Rick Carlisle used to be the Pacers coach. Yeah, he, it's been I, so long he's been in Dallas, but I forgot. Yeah. I mean, four years he was. Yeah. So he, he, he he's going back. And... Uh, Obuka at the Celtics. We, we talked about that last week. And there was another one, Jason Kidd. Looks like he's going to take the Trailblazers job. Hey, he no, took Jay, the... Jason Kidd took the, the Dallas job he just mentioned. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, right. Uh, Chauncey Billups is getting the Portland job. Okay. Looks like, right? I, I am so... I, I am such an anti-Jason Kidd. <laughs> no, but he took two teams to the... Listen, as a player, I can't deny his talent. But yeah. as a person, mm-hmm. uh, Jason Kidd uh, makes my stomach turn. So I will not be rooting for the Dallas Mavericks at all. Well, how I'm could a huge, you? I'm a Cuban huge, anyway. I'm a, exactly. Right. I'm a huge Luka fan. So uh, And a Nowitzki fan. I like I'll, those I'll, guys. I'll, I'll, I'll follow Luka Doncic. But... Uh, to me, Jason Kidd is a piece of garbage. And, uh, yeah. again, it, it just drives me crazy that guys like this continually get get a job when, you know, yep. they're, they're not character people. Yep. So no, they, they, they're running, you know, the, the coaching carousel is, is turning and there's still a couple more vacancies, but we'll see how it's that It's good that, you know, Chauncey Billups uh, getting, a, getting a gig. Oh, and there was He's one deserving. last thing before we move off the NBA. Because the Harlem Globetrotters... Send a petition to uh, Adam Silver that they should be uh, actually franchise in the league. Is so, that right? You know, Silver hasn't commented yet, so I don't think it's going to happen. But, you know, in today's day and age, you never know, right? You never know. The if Globe they, Trotters. Well, if they do, then the Washington Generals should be. <laughs> no, because they always <laughs> lose. <laughs> They're not even good. You know? <laughs> Anyway, so that's our NBA uh, wrap-up this week. And let's move on to Major League Baseball. And this segment is sponsored by Lynch Toyota of Manchester, Connecticut. Loyal, loyal sponsor of the show for, for many, many episodes. And we thank them. Thank you, Mike. But here, we, and Steve, we, we have to open up the pistachio nut and see what's inside. It's this, this spider tack thing. And this it was a rough week for Major League Baseball. It was kind of embarrassing. Well, it's going to be uncomfortable because it's... Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, do you think these guys would really, knowing they're going to get, you know, hosed down on the mound to have glue in their hair and the whole Girardi and Scherzer thing, which was pretty cool. Yeah, was, I would have loved to see Max Scherzer take Joe Girardi apart on that, though. It would yeah. have been pretty funny. You know, Girardi... I, I, I think uh, was kind of a, he's a wise guy. He was a buffoon about this. He was, and uh, uh, I, I didn't like that those antics. To, yeah, to be he honest. thinks he's Lomachenko, like he could take anybody down. Yeah, too, you know, you know the <laughs> the A's pitcher, you know, dropped his drawer. That was pretty you know. funny, right? Um, so I think it was uh, what Rosa or Sosa or something uh, like that. It's just an uncomfortable. Romo, Romo it's was just, last name. It's right. just an uncomfortable scene right now, but uh, and it's just ludicrous. It's not know? ludicrous. Then why should be, why should players have be able to use pine tar on their bat? Doesn't that give them a, uh, an advantage? Yeah, shouldn't that be banned? Uh, shouldn't that be banned? <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I mean. You know. <laughs> The guy swinging the bat and the guy throwing the ball, shouldn't they be on the same level playing field? I don't know. I don't get it. But it was embarrassing. And you shouldn't be you shouldn't have to be able to check Max Scherzer three times in a baseball game. Well, I just find it ludicrous. Them the rules and like I said, the only problem I really have with this is doing it midstream in the middle of the season. I think that's uh, why not do it in the dugout before they walk out on the mound. Does it need to be this spectacle? Is yeah, that really. Apparently, I guess it does. Well, listen, you know, Garrett Cole wasn't allowed to use spider attack last week, and he he pitched a gem. So you know what do you want? No. Jacob Degrom, he doesn't use it anyway. He pitched a gem. But but Garrett Cole's, I'm telling you, 
So now this is going to swing the pendulum over to major league hitting going through the roof. Let's just say Garrett Cole's fastball isn't is still explosive, but not as explosive. <laughs> I'm serious. A hundred is a hundred, Steve. I mean, a hundred. You gotta look at the data, Jeff. Okay. I'm just saying. I thought it was ridiculous. It's ludicrous, and they ought to stop this frisking. You know what? The catcher is probably the one that's got the glue in his pocket. You know, nobody checks him. How come? How come? And he's got the umpire standing right behind him. I mean, right. Foul ball, umpire hands him a ball, he rubs it on his chest protector, throws it to Derek Cole. Three-card money. Crazy. Anyway, so uh, the big home run derby is coming up in Major League Baseball, and the polar bear, one of our favorites, is going to defend his title. He is. Yeah. But a couple notables that aren't going to do it. Um, Tatis, he's not going to do it. Vlad Jr., he's not going to do it. But you know who's going to do it? And this, they're, they're working this kid like a plow horse, this Shohei Hitani, who I love watching. Yeah. But you, you see what it does to these guys. Everybody in the made, in the home run derby, that, that's a that's a exhilarating experience for these guys. Yeah. This kid should rest during the All-Star break, but he can't rest because he's an All-Star. But I love watching this kid, man. I, I watched a piece on 60 Minutes a couple of weeks ago on him, and I said, I'm going to keep an eye on this kid. He's a good pitcher, and he's hitting. He hit a home run last night, 450 feet. I love this for Major League yeah. Baseball. I mean, Otani is at, as advertised. He's yeah. he's uh, <laughs> he can hit. And, uh, but who and else? Pitch. Is, and we talked about this. I thought it was a little premature to give this kid the money, but this kid Fernando Tatis Jr. hit three homers last night. Yeah, three. Hitting 25 homers this year. He's he's all world. Yeah, this I, kid. We, we talked about him, and I thought it was. A, Nope. Early, but you know. No, this kid is the real deal. He as, really as is. is Vlad Jr. He is. <laughs> Vlad Jr. is no joke either. Yeah, he lost fifty pounds and he's he's hitting it farther than his father did. Yeah, pretty and, cool. And he, he's a baby. Yep. And how about let's move on before uh, we we move off of baseball the College World Series. No that's question. Going on. And yeah. How about this? You know, North Carolina State out. Why? COVID protocol. I felt so bad. Me too. I was at work yesterday. Yep. <laughs> I knew they were playing, I think, at 2 o'clock. Mm-hmm. I knew Kamar Rocker. You know, Vanderbilt wins the, you know, the crazy game. Uh, the, They're the defending before. champs, by the way. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But uh, I'm like, and I see COVID and the starting second baseman and this, that, and, and the Wolfpack. I mean, they had destiny like written all over them. Mm-hmm. And, uh, God, I felt horrible. Yep. To, to learn that, and uh, Vanderbilt beats him yesterday. And there's been some unbelievable games in the College World Series. Team, you know, guys wow. down four it's runs. It's great. Right? The Vanderbilt come back. It's great. But, you know what? This is great because it gives us a chance to see Jack Leiter and Kumar Rocker again. Right? Awesome. Yeah. And the, who's and the te- last time? Texas is back, and, you know, Mississippi State's in there. That's and, it. Uh, it's down in the final three. Right? Yeah. So that'll be settled tonight with Mississippi State, right? Yeah. Um, it's been exciting. It's, it's been, been great. great. But you're right. I, I feel bad for, for the North Carolina State team. Um, they were there, you know, and you never know how it could turn out. But it was, it's was. it been exciting. Yeah. And we haven't, I don't remember seeing Texas in this mix since the Roger Clemens, Spike <laughs> Owen days, right? Yeah, it's not that long, but yeah, it seems like it. It, it really does. Yeah. Uh, but Texas is back, and uh, yep. yeah, it's great. <laughs> it's Virginia awesome. got knocked out. Uh you, you know, and we it, talked about Virginia, the, the teams they're, they're in their lacrosse, their soccer, their volleyball, everything. They're in the mix all the time, basketball. We th- but this has been very exciting, and like I said, you know, kudos to College World Series team because yep. it's awesome. Yep, it's awesome. I'll be watching today. Yep. Let's move on to the NFL, and it was you know let's let's, let's clear the room here, right? The Carl Nassib came out as the first openly gay player. Yeah. And you know what? It, it, people have embraced it. The, you know, the topics and the social issues these days are, are brought it to the forefront, right? They're selling Carl Nassib jerseys. I don't have a problem with it, you know. But, you know, this has been rampant. It, it's it's there anyway. I give the kid credit. I give the kid credit for coming out. Yeah, listen, Carl Nassib. I don't know what the, the, the impact is going to be, but you know what? Other people are going to come out. It just opens yeah. the door, and we talked about this before. You know, my take on Carl Nassib, 
originally is I, I found watch him play at Penn State. He's a dominant defensive line. Very good football. He's player. very smart too. He is okay. And the fact that how he looks like Gronkowski actually, <laughs> but, but how he um, uh, came out, I guess is the proper way to say it. It was seamless, right? It, 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 it's it, it, it's not like what it was twenty years ago, right? Right. And it, you know, there were there were guys before. Right? I mean, are there guys going to be in the locker room that you know, want nothing to do with him? Of course, it's it's. But you and I have been in a locker room where we didn't know that somebody may have been eyeballing right. us. But the point of, is, okay. Carl Nassib. Yep. Uh, hey, you know. give him credit. I mean, I'm giving him credit, and and you know, it, it should open the door for others to feel comfortable to come out. And they will, know? in droves, actually. Yeah. I mean, because society is this. You put 100 people in the room, and some people do this, some people do that, and that's right. how it works. Right. It's called the law of large numbers. Again, there's right? going to be some guys that are not going to want to have a snap towel fight with them in the locker room. <laughs> <laughs> right, like the Mika Parsons, <laughs> Parsons guy from Penn State is now on your cowboy. I'm saying that because everybody who knows who, who played football, yeah, yeah. right? You get the towel, you wet it, and you do the snap thing, right? <laughs> if you drop the pass, you know, you got snapped. <laughs> But listen, good for him, right? And the NFL, you know, training camp, guys are showing up, some aren't showing up, and the Rodgers things continues. We're gonna that enough is enough with this. Is he coming back? Yeah, is he's he part, coming back? Yes, of course he's coming. Back. I think he's coming back. Too. He's, yeah. he's coming back. Yeah. But he's it, just sticking it to the Packers. Why though? Because he dislikes the guys that are in charge. Okay, but and the, that's all. This but, is the leverage. But that means he's dissing his this teammates is, no, and stuff. This is the and leverage. Devontae Adams. This is the leverage that he has, and he's going to use it until he has to show up for work. It's that's the James it. Harden thing. He has no leverage. Let's, I mean, re- let's has, remember Aaron Rodgers. They're is, paying him forty million dollars a year. He is a smart guy. Aaron Rodgers is no idiot. No, he's not. He's very smart. That's the yeah. point here. Okay. But it's 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 sending He's, a bad message. He doesn't you know? care. He doesn't care. But if you because sign the contract, He's going then to you play. have to play. He's got to play. But why is he, he he causes this whole because ruckus? Because he dislikes this guy so much, he wants to embarrass him. Uh, and unfortunately, yeah, can we you know say he's dissing his teammates? Yeah, uh, I guess. Yeah. But you know what? This whole it, I don't know. What to, I don't think it's about money. I mean, I think it's, you know, he's, his feelings were hurt that they drafted Jordan Love. But you know what? These old, all these quarterbacks that came out. It's not out, that his feelings are hurt they drafted Jordan Love. Yeah, no. It's that he was never consulted about it. But what? what? Because he's Aaron Rodgers. I don't <laughs> care who he is. He's I, still an employee I, of the Green Bay Packers. I absolutely understand that. <laughs> but it's also the Green Bay Packers. Okay. Okay. What else is there in Green Bay but the Green Bay Packers? Nothing. Okay. Nothing. And outside of Aaron Rodgers, maybe another superstar on the team. Right, so go down. Now he's tarnished himself like Brett Favre. Brett Favre could have been the mayor of, and of Green Bay for the rest of his life, but he blew that up, right? Just like Tiki Barber blew it up for the Giants. Right. And, you know, I mean, it just drives me crazy. It drives me crazy too, but, I mean, that's what it is. But here's one thing I wanted to bring up, because these guys are coming up. Are they going to, like, the salaries, Right. Things are opening back up. Is Baker Mayfield and all these guys that are up for new contract? Are they all going to get Dak Prescott conf, uh, contracts? They're going to have to, I mean, or within the ballpark. But is Baker Mayfield Aaron Rodgers? It doesn't he... matter. It doesn't matter because that's the market. I know, but I'm just wondering because there's a whole Jared Allen. Is he going to get Baker Mayfield money? Who's going to Josh get... Allen? You know, Josh Allen. You yeah. said Jared Allen. Josh Allen. Josh Allen. Yeah. Yeah, you know. What about your boy Daniel Jones? This is a big year for him. It is. So much so that he could get $40 million a year from the no, biggest market. No, but he's market. not up. He's a year behind those You understand guys. what I'm saying? Yep, yep. I like the kid, you know. But you're right. If this is the going rate, then they're all going to get it. Yeah. Right? You know? so, 
Eli's back with the Giants in a you know non football you know communication public relations type. Yeah, I, I have no They're problem. They're gonna retire his number. Yeah, what do you think of that? No problem with that. Good. Absolutely not. Me either. No. Huh. Won two Super Bowls. Yeah. No question. Yep. Gets his number retired. I'm with you. So listen, but I guys, still, when I think of Eli Manning, I can't help but go back to his rookie year, second year. He looked ridiculous. When we were watching him, <laughs> and we were just about to throw the towel in. Like, like you couldn't be any more inept and look more but deer how, in the headlights than he did. But that's how Terry Bradshaw was in his first two years in Pittsburgh. I get it. I'm, mm -hmm. j I'm just saying. And now, and now we're... Like not even blinking and, and get his number and retired. his resume is intact. He won, so he the won point is, don't Bowls. give up. You know, yeah. you never know. I agree. But listen, football's a ways away. We got the NBA, we got the NHL. That's the focus here, right? Yeah. So I wanted to move on. I wanted to bring up one thing. Um, you know, as we move into our notable passings, because this this event that happened in Surfside, Florida, horrifying. Right, building condo collapse. They've, they've recovered four bodies. Um, Del 150 are missing. Del Boca Vista. I it, know. Yeah, it's it's shocking. But when you see it and you know, and you see that pile, you know there's 100 people at least under there. And it's, oh, right. It's just heartbreaking. You're I wanted there to, lying on your couch watching TV. And, and Sports with Mono and Mono wants to send out our best to all those families because yeah, it's horrible. Yeah. It's horrifying. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> Without question. And they, of course, like everything else, they got it on video and you see it and you go, good God, you know, how, how does this even right. possibly happen? You know, and at a beautiful place like that. But I, I wanted to make sure that we gave a shout out to those those families and um, the first responders because, you know, they got their work cut out for them. You know, they know, you know, what they're going to find isn't going to be what they were looking for. It's what? terrible. Yeah. Oh my God! I mean, and now you know there's going to be all the second guessing. On a uh, smaller scale, it's it's no different than the towers coming down from 9/11. Of course, and that that's what resonates in your mind yeah. when you see it. You know, times that pile times yeah. oh, that, that, fifty. That's know, what 100. I. That, that's yeah. what I. You know, my initial thought was seeing yeah. that, and uh, you and know. we all lost people. You know that we right. knew. Right. And, and I'm, just, I'm just saying the visual of the structure coming down. I'm not Shocking. saying why it came. I'm just saying the visual right. of it. Yep. Coming down is sickening, and the rescue efforts—it's—it's it's just and, which is you know heroic, big and, time, and, and you, you know so <laughs> big time, right? So that's you know I wanted to make sure that we brought that out because sports with mono and mono, we're about sports, but we're about people too. And we are. We're people. Is, we're people. People. We are people. Um, so let's move on to our notable passing, Steve and um, Rene Robert. How about yes, that? Yes. And we remember him. Yeah, I mean, we, we remember him at the end of his career. Yeah, but we remember him vividly. We, I mean, the, the mid seventies Buffalo Sabers, the French Connection, the French Connection, <laughs> they made the Stanley Cup Finals against the uh, Philadelphia Flyers yep. in seventy five, closest they've ever come because they've never won a Stanley Cup. Right, right. And uh, you know that line of Rick Martin, Gilbert Perrault, and Rennie Robert was uh, yep. special. They were special, special. That was great. Don Edwards and goal. And, uh, wow, good call. I, I, I don't know if I could have pulled that out of the... And, out of the uh, you know, Rennie Robert had a really solid NHL career. He, he was an ambassador for the uh, Buffalo Sabres. He was yeah. well-loved by the community, by the fan base. 72, I think he was. And he got overshadowed by Gilbert Perrault because he was the goal well, scorer. He was, he was the sniper talent. kind he, of yeah, thing. Yeah, he was yeah. a special talent. But, uh, yeah, it was sad to hear about Rennie Robert and, uh, you know... Yep. Great hockey player, no doubt, and a, and a better person apparently by all accounts. Yep, and uh, you know from the world of hockey, of course, you you mentioned this to me, Tom Curvers. Yeah, I and remember. Uh, I remember Tom. When Curvers. you said it, I go, oh, he played for the Devils, he played for the Islanders, he played for seven different teams actually. Yeah. And he was a really good hockey player. He Tom Curvers uh, led Minnesota Duluth to the national title, and young too, fifty eight, and won the Hobie Baker Award, which yep. is no joke as a defenseman. Right. He was drafted by the Canadians and played, I think, his first seven or eight years in the league as yep. a Canadian. Had a good career. Had a great, solid career. And uh, another guy that, by all accounts, was well liked, loved, liked loved by his teammates, yep. by his family, friends. Tom Carver's uh, 58 years old, uh, lung cancer, I think. 
and uh, died too young. And uh, yeah, mm-hmm. I want to acknowledge Tom Carver's because I remember him. I, I yep. remember him vividly. I, uh, I do too. Now, when you brought it up at first, I said I had to think about it, and then I go, Oh yeah, he played for the Islanders. He played for the Devils. Yeah. He played for seven different teams. Yeah, he he traded a, five yeah, times. Exactly. Probably played at least fifteen years too. Yeah. So. But um, listen, it's good to report that we don't have any other notables that we have to mention unless you have one. No, um, no. Which is good. We like a short week when it comes to that segment. We do. But I wanted to thank you guys for joining us. And again, you know, we love doing the show. We're here week after week. And we're going we're gonna to continue to be here. And I'm going to give a shout out to one of our listeners, Tony. Who, you know, Hi, is Tony. Recovering from, a, like I said, a medical issue. Yeah. But she... Sent us an email at sportswithmonoandmono at gmail.com. Yep. Let us know she's on the way to recovery. And Very she's good. looking forward to joining us again on our show. Good luck. Yep. She's got one more year of Jimmy G before Lance <laughs> takes over. Right, Tony? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I want to say a shout out to our nephew, Thomas, uh, who uh, got married over the past weekend. Or the past week, and uh, congratulations to him. And um, we can only imagine that uh, more Monahans will be uh, procreated in the coming uh, oh, years. Yeah. So, uh, yep. congratulations to Thomas. The Monahan name is not in jeopardy, let's put it that not, way. <laughs> not right now, no. <laughs> but thanks for joining us, everybody, and we look forward to you. Like I said, I, please send us an email at sports. With mono and mono at gmail.com. Wanted to give a shout out to one of our new listeners, Mr. Eric Hansen. Mr. Eric uh, Hansen? I know Eric Hansen. Used to work with years ago, but now he's he's a loyal listener of the show, and we wanted to welcome him oh, aboard. Great. Hey, Eric, nice to uh, hear your name, and uh, thanks for listening. Hopefully, we get to see you soon. So, we'll talk to you guys next week. Enjoy the, the unbelievably packed schedule of sports. Yeah, College World Series. Uh, NBA, NHL, NHL, right? NHL, and Stanley NHL. Cup will start soon, the finals, yeah. and uh, we'll talk to you next Saturday. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Be good. Bye.